It's kind of the uh, field, uh, field of battle, if you will, for the 2010 uh, Team America Rocketry Challenge. The one thing, the one word to me that really espouses what's happening here is passion. Well, these kids are all very passionate about this, and that was the whole objective of the program, is to get a bunch of kids, bright kids, engaged. Uh, they're very drawn. It's, it's exciting technology. It's uh, a lot of fun to launch these things. Uh, and more than that for us, it really kind of hopefully spins off, not just a passion for the rocket event, but math and science and an awful lot of these kids that come out of this, uh, many of whom didn't really know or think about careers in math or science-related kind of uh, degrees, you know, enjoy doing it and, and look at it and say, geez, I go to college, do the right thing, I get paid for having this much fun. So I think it's uh, something that we hope keeps on rolling because every year you see new class of kids coming through it and there is a lot of passion and excitement about it. As I understand the history of the event, the 2003 event was meant to be a one-off, and it was such a good idea that it's been continued. What do you see being the future of TARC and initiatives like this? Well, I think this thing has some fabulous momentum behind it. You know, you see schools year after year after year. Everybody's excited uh, about not only how that team did, but feeling like they can be in next year's team. So I think this thing, as you said, it was supposed to be a one-year deal. I'm not sure how you would stop it at this point. We have so many schools involved and so many kids, you know, not just the kids that are on the teams, the kids that hear about what's going on are kind of looking forward to the year where they get to get on the team and, and be part of it. So I think at this point, it's, it's sort of on autopilot, if you will. Freedom through innovation. It's what led us to develop Cirrus Flying 2.0, the framework for a bold new take on private aviation. And as a result, the gap between the aircraft we produce and those of our competitors continues to widen. Cirrus knows where the personal aircraft industry is headed. We're already there. Well, this is an industry initiative. This didn't happen by accident. This happened because industry concern, was concerned enough about the future of where uh, their staff was coming from and where the talent was coming from to put together the first event and keep this going. But is the industry doing enough? What advice would you give to your brethren in industry about not just TARC, but building our future? Well, I think all the industries that are supporting this thing, the Aerospace Industry Association and all of our member companies uh, have been with this thing from the beginning because they saw it as an opportunity that was something that would attract kids in and get them excited about a profession in science or math and engineering, be it space related or aircraft or, you know, the, I mean, it's a very, very broad range, obviously, of products that represent all of our companies. And it's been so successful that they obviously stay on board. And you're right, beyond that, it's not just about this particular challenge, but all these companies are very involved in local STEM activity and working with local schools and mentoring programs. So this is only one piece, but obviously it's a, it's a very sort of colorful piece, if you will, that I think attracts a lot of passion. But it's only one piece of what we do, I think, as an industry to try to attract talent um, that wants to go into the, the technologies and degrees that are math and science oriented. As I understand, there's a lot of concern right now about where the future engineering talent is coming from. That The fact that with the amount of uh, engineering personnel that are being bred through the college system right now that we're barely keeping up with what we need. How critical is this going to be uh, to the future of our industries? Well, it, it is all about generating interest at the high school level, right? You've got to get kids that kind of want to go in, and a lot of these kids actually are in middle school, so that as they move into the high school age, they're taking calculus, they're taking physics classes, they're taking the things that really prepares them to go into the undergraduate level. You know, today we have uh, a lot of great engineering schools in the country. Obviously, people come all over the world to do this. Uh, so for all us, it's all about generating that pipeline at the, at the middle and, uh, and high school level. And I think as long as we get a lot of kids interested and you see people applying to the schools, you know, clearly we have the capability at both the undergraduate and graduate level to educate and train a lot of great engineers in the country. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidine, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidine Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. Well, coming from somebody who's obviously made it. What advice do you give the uh, young person out there who doesn't have a rocket club and hasn't quite gotten uh, all the information necessary yet to figure out how they can realize their dreams? What encouragement, what advice do you have for them? Well, I think you just look and say that this is an opportunity in an, in an industry that does a lot of exciting things. They're, they're things that people get very excited about. Um, they're great technologies, they're interesting product lines, and again, it's very, very broad. You know, it's not just in space, it's not just aircraft or helicopters. So the number of opportunities these kids have as they come out uh, and get a good, solid, you know, technical degree 
they're, these are not the people who are worried about where their job's going to be in the future, and so they're really, you know, long and, 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 and frankly, very satisfying professions. One of the things we enjoyed this morning talking to one of the previous TARC participants who's now at, in school at uh, Virginia Tech. One, rockets are cool, and I can get paid for this. Uh, exactly, and that's one of the things I always say with these kids is, you know, you get getting kids engaged with this, and then we stand up and tell them, hey, guys, you know, you can actually get paid for having this much fun, but you got to hit the books, you got to study your math, your science, and then you got to do the work of, uh, of, of getting a, a good, solid technical degree, and, and you can do this every day of the week. Well, we certainly thank you for your support for this community, and, boy, I, I sure wish to... Uh, 40 some odd years ago when I was coming up the ranks, I had something like this to measure my life by, and I can't wait to see the results over the next few years. Great. Well, we appreciate you being here and, and helping publicize this thing because it's a, it's a great program, and we just want to continue to see it grow. Well, we won't miss one in the future, I promise. Great. Thank you. Thanks, sir.